The internal rate of return is the percentage that makes the net present value of all cash flows from a particular investment equal to zero. In other words, the internal rate of return is the rate at which the present value of all future cash inflows equals the upfront cost of the project. When assessing the profitability and potential return of an investment, companies often seek to calculate this break-even rate. To help illustrate what this all means, let's take a look at a scenario. We're being asked in the question, find the internal rate of return of a project assuming the initial cost is 25,000 and the cash flows are 10,000 after one year, 9,000 after two years, and 8,000 after three years. In a previous video, we looked at the net present value formula, and we learned that it is equal to the cost negated plus the present value of all future cash inflows. So for us, we can denote it as NPV is equal to negative 25,000, that's the upfront cost, plus the present value of the first future cash flow, so the present value of 10,000, whatever it happens to be, I'll call it PV1, plus the present value of the incoming 9,000 two years from today, so we'll call this PV sub 2, and the present value of this amount coming at the end of year 3. So let's write that into our formula. Plus PV sub 1, plus PV sub 2, plus PV sub 3. Now, when we're calculating the internal rate of return, the net present value must equal to zero. So I'll replace NPV with zero. And now all we have to do is find the expression for PV1, PV2, and PV3. For that, we'll use the future value of compound interest formula. And we'll manipulate this equation for PV. Simply divide both sides by 1 plus i raised to the power of n. So I have fv over 1 plus i raised to the power of n is equal to pv. Now to find the present value of $10,000, we will substitute into fv, which represents the future value, the amount, 10,000, over 1 plus, the interest rate is what we're looking for, that's the interest rate per period, and since the 10,000 is being received one year from today, the value of n, which represents the periods, is 1. We'll take this expression and substitute it in for PV1, where our equation starts to look like this. Now to find the second present value, that's for 9,000, I'll take 9,000 divided by 1 plus i, and that's being raised to 2, since it's 2 years from today. So I'll include that into my equation, and the same thing can be said for 8,000, but the exponent will now be a 3. And don't forget that this equation is equal to zero. Now what we have to do is solve this, but this is not easy to solve by hand. So we'll use Excel to help us through it. Inside Excel, the very first cell that's highlighted will be your guess. What do you think I will be? Let's use 0 0.1. The guess doesn't even have to be remotely close to the answer, but use 0 0.1 as a starting point. And then in the next cell, B, we'll type in what the equation looks like. We have equals negative 25,000 plus 10,000 divided by one plus. Rather than placing I, we'll put in our guess. Now our guess was in the A1 slot. So we'll write it like this. Plus 9,000 divided by one plus, again, A sub one, but now it's being raised to the power of two, plus 8,000 divided by one plus, our guess, raised to the power of 3. Now click that cell, go into data, this table, and click what if analysis. Then click goal seek. Leave everything as it is, and inside this input box, put in what the MPV is equal to. In our case, the MPV is equal to 0. And underneath that, place in where your guess was. Your guess was in A1. Now watch what happens. Once it's done, press OK, and what you have in this cell is the interest rate, or the IRR. And as you can see, if we multiply this value by 100%, we get 4.1059. So the value of I is roughly 4.1059%. That's the year after year rate of return for this investment. Now, as you can see in this scenario, all the future cash flows were positive. None of them were negative, but there will be cases where you will end up with a negative cash flow 
from one period to another. And when that sort of thing happens, solving for i, either through Excel or by hand, may produce two or more different i values. So if you encounter two or more different possible values for the IRR when solving for it, this typically means that the investment has non-standard cash flows, such as alternating positive and negative amounts, as I just discussed. In such a situation, the company must assess the feasibility and reasonableness of each IRR based on the context of the investment. For example, consider the economic environment, expected return rates, and how each IRR aligns with the project's financial projections and goals. If you'd like to see another example where we have alternating positive and negative amounts, let me know in the comment section below and I'll gladly upload another video. Thank you so much for watching.